whole process. People might like it. It might be that you already bear some fan base or you've been working, um, you know, uh, um, working and building up your fan base and building your brand that you know already an audience that you can just throw anything out. So first step, get a budget. I don't know how much budget you can afford, but it's always good to have an affordable budget. For me, I always tell my artists, like, okay, try to put like 5,000. 5,000 if you want, because you're investing in yourself. Let's say five grand, put five grand in yourself. So use like a, you know, um, 500, record the song properly. If you want to feature artists, try to get a, a good artist that has a little buzzing out there for like, let's say for a thousand dollars, for example, thousand dollars. You get boss, you know, put bring a little traction and uh, you know, uh, momentum to the song because he's featuring with his fan base. You could do that, or you could just stay by yourself with the song with 500 recording, mastering, mixing. Boom, you mix the song, finalize it. Then you get a good dope uh, artwork. You need the artwork like a cover for the single. Let's say a single song. I always advise any artist to do singles first, do single because you know, if you put a whole bunch of songs out there. People can't really focus on you and, you know, just know you're like an artist. I think single, which you can push it to a certain amount of how you define your goal and uh, people can gravitate to you. Then you can throw an album out there when you have the balls going on. So if it's a single, $500, production, uh, which is mixing, matching, recording, boom. Then you do artwork. In that $500, you can put artwork to it. Artwork, you do a dot artwork. It must not be a picture or you do a photo shoot, for example. Do a photo shoot, get a good artwork out there, put it out. So when you put it out, the rest money now, let's say you have, okay, okay four, four grand, let's say 4,500 and you have remaining. That should go mostly for your marketing. Now, you want to have some certain team of people you want to work with. You need to shoot a visual. Visual is very important. You need a video for that. Because a lot of people gravitate just to visual right now. You can put a song, it can, it can do what it sounds good. But if you don't have a visual, people not gonna, people not really gonna you know um, it's not gonna stick for long. So when you have a video um, out there, then you need to market that video. When you market it, that's where all most of the money comes to it. And you you have to market that video. Let's say you put it on YouTube, you have to push it to get that exposure, which you're running like campaigns on YouTube, and you have it on other platforms. Let's say you have it on Spotify, iTunes. Uh, Amazon, all this uh, digital uh, streaming platform, you need to put that money, that four grand or 4,500 into that marketing of the digital streaming platform and YouTube, which you're doing just by app. I always advise that you need to know how to run ads or you employ, employ someone, which I'm telling you that you need to have a team. A team of people is someone doing promotion. Doing promotion in the digital platform, doing promotion on YouTube, doing promotion on Facebook. You want to have that team of people working for you. So that 4,500, for example, you're paying these people to do the job. And they're going to tell you with that budget what they can, what, what they can do for you. You know, which, I, I, you know, again, you need to know how, how far you want to go with that budget. That's going to give you a good exposure. For example, you have a video that is top notch video you can put it out there run it run they run an ad for you that video goes up to like you know people gravitate into it so now they're building a fan base for you you need to understand now you're looking now go and look those data that the comments the likes then since they run the ad they have to be giving you those data for you to see your niche who's really liking who's following you where your fan base is coming from where, where your fans are so again knowing that you can tell them that, you know, okay, I want to target just the people in my area. If I come from, you know, for example, you're from Kansas or, or St. Louis, I want to target people in the Midwest. Midwest, you know, I want to have those fans there because it's near to me. I can go do bookings or do shows. So with that budget, focus on that niche of people, that audience in that, in that region for them to follow, you know, and watch your music video. That's how you, you create now a shared fan because now they're seeing, oh, she got some talent and she got a good product. Now they start checking you. Now you see, you, you, you create some kind of traction. You're creating traction now. Then you have to engage with the fans. 
when they generate that type of, you know, um, uh, that fraction of momentum for you, you have to engage with them. Like, you know, you could shoot little things like, oh, what do you think of what type of next song I want you yeah, wish me to drop? Just to engage with the fan. What type of song should I put out? What what you want to listen? Oh, engage something different. Like, oh, I'm trying to give away to uh to a charity group. What are the what a suggestion? What should I give? Should I just get a, you know tons of uh, uh clothes or something? You know, just engage your fans, just an example. So that those are all the little little tricky ways that you can play with your fans and understand your whole niche of people that follow you, um, even with the music that you put out. So now they're following you on Instagram. You're, you're creating traction on Instagram, YouTube, uh, Facebook, because of those apps that they run, run for you. So this team of people, you have a videographer that shot your video, <clears throat> gave you good quality. So that's one, one of your team members. You have someone. Now you haven't even started talking about putting a song on the radio. Since that budget is four grand, 4500 you run an app on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Um, let's say, okay, the budget now you're looking for, like you might have a remaining budget of 2000 or so, for example. So that two grand, you want to see, okay, what do I really want to do with that two grand? How, you know, look at, always try to track your result. It's always good to track and see. Then you, you know, talk to these people. Then you're creating a relationship with these people because the next product you put out, they're still going to be doing stuff for you. So you don't want to waste too much time. If someone is not doing right for you, not doing a good job for you. For example, um, the ad is not bringing you a lot of traction. You could switch. There's a lot of people doing different things. So this book is telling you all of these things. For me, I went through that. Before I kind of get a team, I made a lot of loss. I made so much loss before I found the right people that are doing, that are said things and they do it. So you should be, you should be, um, you should, you should be able to handle that because there's a lot of fake and, you know, a lot of scamming in this business. And I have it in my book. So when the book, when you buy that book, you're going to see all these things, I'm telling you. Really your brand and everything. So you, you have that remaining budget. Now you want to decide, okay, it, are these people doing good for me? This is my team of people. I have a social media person. I have someone promoting my um, YouTube which is all social medias where I have someone uh, who bear my uh, uh, video or bear my uh, artwork. So these people now, you're using them just how, when you want them. Pay them, they use to do your artwork. Video person, you pay them, they shoot your video. Social media people, those are people that you work with them for a long, long, because they have to keep your brand going on for you to get that visibility. You need that visibility out there, which is the exposure that creates the distraction. Now you're building your fans and see who is following you. Always keep track of who is following you. See how many times they hit like button. See who is hitting the like, who is, who is dropping comments. And trying to engage with these people. It takes a lot of work. It's a process. So that's why I'm saying you need to have a, uh, uh, you need to have, you know, uh, how would I put it? Action plan. You need to have an action plan. What I'm telling you, action plan, which is planning, taking action and execute. You need to have, a plan how you want to move because it's a whole process it's not a day job a lot of people think that they have talent oh i'll just put music out there boom now talent doesn't work anymore i mean you need to have some type of talent they have work big talent the talent doesn't work hard you can have talent you know working it's not going to go anywhere you can have the best song it's not going to take you anywhere and even major label they're looking to that they want to see that you have that boss and when you're creating all this traction that's when you get the exposure. You don't know who's following you. You don't know who got you on the radar. They might contact you. Now you have all this, <clears throat> all this uh, data that you have. Oh, I have a good fan base. For example, I have Instagram. I have a good fan base. In YouTube, I have real followers, organic followers follow me. I'm seeing some type of traction. And uh, Facebook, now you want to see, okay, is it the right time for me to contact a major level and take meetings? You want to probably want to take meetings with a major level. To present your work out there so you want to take it and you need to look for where major labor they don't sit with you for a meeting you have to have some budget to even sit with them and you they will listen to your meetings, but they're not going to give you too much time so when you come you have to come with all this data and present to them i'm buzzing in my city this is this, this is that this is that so how can we work how can we do you know for example the book my book is going to tell you what type of deal you could sign like an independent artist even when you're a major artist what deal they give you for example so 
That's what I'm saying. Then the budget that you have, you want to see, okay, do I go to a radio or do I uh, do an online radio? There's a lot of online radio that you, you can get exposure as well. For free, you know, but you need to have, uh, uh, you know, a plan. So online radio, you could Google, check out online radio. You have DTR radio. They play your song digital and you get the royalty. So these are all things that that book is telling you. And uh, again, the book tells you some precaution you need to take. For example, make sure everything that you're locking in, uh, in terms of, uh, 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 let's say, promotion, you have an agreement, a contract. Always trying to lock in contracts. Always trying to get lock in contracts. Nothing for free. Uh, you know, sorry, not only for free, but uh, if you're signing like a... Um, Someone who's running your social media, make sure they send you a proposal with your name, everything. If you don't have a lawyer, yeah, you can you can review that yourself. And if it looks legit to you, you will know. Uh, if you don't know, then you can pass it to your lawyer. But I always advise any serious artist to always try to get a lawyer. Get a lawyer that can review any contract you want to lock in. Because it's business, you know? If you're investing some money, Someone can lock in a contract that's fake. You don't know that you're locking the contract. Like, I, I, had to say, I had an example. I was telling Giga in the other show. I had an example where I lock in the contract, but that was still a scammer. You know, I got scammed for, like, you know, I, I'm saying that loud because it's, all this, they should be very careful, right? There's a lot of scams. The internet is powerful. You, internet can make you famous, can bring all type of traction or uh, um, momentum to your product. But you should be very careful with scamming because a lot of scamming with, with social media, fake pages, people contacting you, they're telling you they can't verify your page. There's a lot of fake. Like right now, when I, when I get that kind of message, I already know because I've, I've been to that, that uh, I had the experience. I learned my lesson from it, which is I turn into blessings. <laughs> and then writing this book just to give my, my knowledge and you know, my experience that I made for all artists to be cautioned of all these factors because... I got one time I got a scam where I, I flew all the way to Miami. They bought my flight one way to go to Miami, book a hotel, everything, but I have to give an advance of money. So I got there to do a show, and I wasn't even on the list to perform. So I already gave this guy advance. So he used my advance money to book a flight for me. We yes. had a contract. Yeah, we had a contract. <laughs> He sent me a contract, we had an agreement, everything. I passed it through my lawyer, and I'm like, oh, it looks good. If the guy is booking your ticket, is booking your hotel, you can never know. If you can. So I fell in that BS. I fell in that. So that's what got me more stronger, got me more like pay attention more. So when I got to Miami, I'm like, oh my God, this one is a different level scamming. I had to pay, he bought my ticket. Now I had just one way, I had to pay my flight to come back. To DC where I live. So that's a that's the type of thing, you know, you want to pass it through a lawyer, they're gonna tell you if the, the, the agreement is authentic or not. So I always advise each and every artist to, you know, if you can't avoid for a lawyer, but just let somebody else review uh, any agreement you have and give their own thought about it. Don't don't make any decision if you really want to invest some money. Um, for example, you have guys that are like, okay, they want to book you for a show, you for you to open for a major artist. But you need to pay because they ask money to pay. You open for a major eye because you're getting that exposure. So they will give you a contract. You want to review it properly, review with someone, for example. So I believe I'm talking too much. But I mean, when the book when the book comes out, no, they, they will sit down and talk about and talk about it again. You know what I mean, Jay? <laughs> yeah. I think you're on mute. I think your phone is mute. Is that yeah, on now? I can't hear you okay, now. Okay, th this is the first time I have ever heard you so passionate, so so informative. Um, all the other times I've talked to you, you've been like this uh, caged up box. And now I can see that you love what you do and you actually want to help other people. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> this out of all the times I've ever talked to you, this is my favorite because I, I got you to come out of your comfort zone and okay. I got you to talk. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I try to keep it a little cozy. I'm just trying to keep it warm because I know it's an interview. And if I'm talking about a book, I know I don't have the book at hand right now. When I have the book out, because I have it's on my social media. So I will go each and every chapter and I explain. So, but you strike me. You know how you strike me for me to talk? Because you said okay. you have a song you're trying to put out there. So me, I'm I got a big heart. I would tell you, even though I'm saying I could go buy my book, that you carrying the conversation, I would tell you, you know, what steps you, you know you, you, you can take to put yourself and be visible out there. Because you asked me that question and uh we have I have a relationship already with Jiga, we you know, from different interviews that I've done. And I believe, you know, it's only right for me. I don't I would never lie to any artist. If I can't do something, I always tell my artist I can't do it. Or if I don't have the budget to do something, I'll be honest. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't fake because when you fake in the long run, it's gonna, it's gonna catch up with you later. And um, it's the same thing with this business. But it's a lot of fake. The industry is all full of bullshit. There's a lot of people bullshitting a lot. So that you should be able to, you know, be prepared to have a tough skin. Like, <clears throat> you know, people will tell you stuff they don't do it. You know. So for me. I just try to dominate what I'm doing. I try to be a dominator. I don't try to compete with no one. I dominate my sector. That's what I put it. If I like, I'm writing a book. I will tell you well, how wh what is what is your brand? What is the brand? How can you brand yourself? Understand the industry because you know what? Understanding the industry is. I've been there. I was signed with Sony Music. I was signed with Sony Music on a deal. The song that I have with Kevin Gates. You know what I mean? So I know the in depth. What is the process? What type of budget they're looking for? What type of deal they can give you? What type of contract you, you can be under a major level? Or you stay independent. I chose to be independent. I chose to go back independent. I quit the, I quit the deal because you know what? I felt like, oh, I need to take my career in my own hands because I don't want to put it. You know what they did? I was having meetings. They gave me meetings every week. Staffing meetings. The staffing was good. That was a good thing I learned. Being under contract with the major, the staffing and the production. The production was sold on top notch. They're making sure that you have a top notch production where it can't go wrong. Once they put it out, it can't go wrong with the production of your music. When the, it goes on the radio, you listen to you want to listen to it again. I can't count how many times I record one single, my verse, which is 16 bars. I record it like 10, 20, 10 to 15 times just to put like once, like I'll say, J, uh, for example, they'll say no, switch it, bring a deep, push it out from the stomach, you know. So it's a whole process. So those are, those are things that I really learned being on the um, on the major level. They make sure that your product is 100% is satisfied with them. And so if they put it out there, they don't have, they don't see. I mean, you're gonna have critics. You're gonna have a lot of criticism. You, you yeah. So the, then the staff in birth. Looking from the other point of view, since I didn't take a type of deal where they invested in me, it was a partnership deal. So I decided that, you know what, I can do this stuff. I was already build, building my stuff before, before I went with them. They were interested with the single I have with Kevin Gates. So I was like, you know, I, I'll do it myself. I'm a DIY person. Let me do it myself. It's going to take a longer time as a process, but I believe that will be sat uh, satisfying and be successful. Because I understand the route, I understand what it takes. But you know, now I give you my career. You guys are under. I'm under contract with you. I have to always report. I have to always tell you. I can't put music like that. That's another thing. Being under contract, you can't just drop any music like that. You have to tell them, and they have to <laughs> sit down with you. Each and every project, they have to sit down with you to have a proper planning and goal for each project, a song or a whole project. So. That's what all this book is telling you. I'm telling you because I made this experience, you know, um, and I want to share with all aspiring artists that are serious about the business and learn how to make money with music or whatever product. For example, you can have mesh product, you can have T-shirts you're trying to sell, or what type of product you want to put out. This book can direct you in terms of, you know, understanding your branding and <clears throat> learning what route you should take or uh, what type of contract, uh, what type of precaution or, you know, kind of team you need to, to build. The perspective or the direction is music, but 
generally speaking, you could use the same route and direction I'm giving this book in everything you're doing in life. You know what I mean? When it comes to building a brand or business, you know what I mean? For example, if you want to do, if you want to, you know, let's say you want to, you want to, okay, be a social media marketer, for example. You want to market, you know, market, you know, use social media to market artists. You still need to sit down to plan and properly build a, a, a base or build a website, for example, that is showing your brand that is showing your work or showing the experience because you need to sit down and learn and understand how to market on all this. So it's still the same thing, which I said is planning, action, and execute. You need to understand what type of market. You need to understand how to beat traffic. You need to understand how to run advertisement. You need to understand, you know, uh, what precaution you need to take to, you know, avoid certain things not to go wrong, which is the skills management. You need to understand how to manage timing. You need to understand all those things. So this book, I put it in my own words, but it contains everything I'm saying right now, which you can use it from day to day with life and day to day business that you're on. You know what I mean? You're still muted. I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been been definitely an interesting location, let me tell you. <laughs> but you know what? This this has been my very favorite favorite. Um, I I wish, I wish, I wish we could do it face to face. I wish, I wish we could do it face to face. Yeah, but uh, I think you're breaking up. Interesting background. I do. It was the second verse. I think the line is bad. I can't hear you. I can't hear you now. Okay, okay. can you hear me now? Uh, I recorded the first verse, and then the rap artist recorded the second verse because I wrote it as like it was. It's a, it's a song that honors faithful military spouses, and okay. so I wanted to have it. Um, and I tried to re re write it to where I was the only singer mm. and my husband was like, no, you need to stick with our dream that was our song that we wrote and it was a male and female and so um, I need to find an, and, and my husband hates rap but he said that if I can't find another rap song I'll rap the song okay <laughs> I think you you break yeah the line is breaking up. Uh, you break up like oh man in the well, middle. Perhaps, I think. perhaps I'll wrap. Oh, you're breaking up. I'm not, I'm not sure if Jig is there. I'm, I can't even hear you. Yeah, Hello? she's she's on.